to play. That's John Lennon. He's the cheeky one. And he was about to conquer the world. These boys are going to be bigger than Elvis. We need a new name. How about the Beatles? NBC presents the journey from working class rebel. The Beatles must be single and available. I'm pregnant. To the leader of rock and roll legends. Where we go, lads? To the top. NBC presents the John Lennon story. This high-definition presentation was made possible in part by Bose Corporation. Yes, 120, 130, thank you, madam, for this incredible item. The first guitar ever owned by John Lennon. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is the very guitar John Lennon was playing the first time he met Paul McCartney. Yes, 140. We're at 140,000 pounds, or approximately 225,000 US dollars. Going once, going twice, Sold to the telephone bidder in New York for 225,000 US dollars. John, you're going to be late for school. I'm coming. Mimi. Mimi, look at this. A guitar you can send away for. A guitar? Can I get it? I want to learn how to play. Hope you think I'm spending six pounds on a silly toy. It's not a lark, Mimi. I'd play it, take lessons. I know I'd be good. But you'd be good at school, too, if you only applied yourself. But that's what's important. Now go on. Don't be late tonight. I'm going out. Gents, any spare change would be greatly appreciated. That's cool, John. Wait until I get my guitar. I thought your auntie said you couldn't have one. Yeah, but I'm gonna ask my mum. Why would you ask your auntie first? Is she rich? No, no, no. You see, mate, John has a strange setup. He lives with his aunt, mate, because his man's shacked up with some bloke. Hey, hey, who are you, my bloody biographer? Just trying to put the lad straight, John. Well, I'll put you straight. Hey, just because your family's all messed up. Don't go trying to put the blame on me. My family? When's the last time your old talk of a father's been sober? At least I've got a bloody father! <laughs> <laughs> Started this. Was it you, Lennon? He was just kidding, sir. Have a little fun. Like the lonely playing, sir. Playing my foot. Go to the headmaster's office. Both of you now. Nice hat, Mum. Posh, isn't it? Thought I might wear it to high tea on Sunday. <laughs> and how's the handsomest lad in Liverpool? Not so good. Oh, trouble again at school. I hate it there. Teachers are a bunch of bloody sickos. Mm, nothing's changed, John. They're all fools in my time, too. 
But it'll all be over soon enough. Just pay them no heed. Come on. Let's go inside and have a nice cup of tea. <laughs> I can just hear Mimi now. Oh, I'd look good buying you a guitar. Apply yourself at school, John. That's the real ticket to a good life. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. Almost word for word. Do I know my sister? <laughs> but can I get it, Mum? Please? I just started the skiffle band in school. But we can't just play spoons and washboards. No. You're right. You need a proper instrument. Have them send the guitar here. When it comes, I'll talk to Mimi. I'll just tell her I got you an early birthday present. And once it comes, I'll teach you how to play. Now, make sure your fingers are properly bent. No, don't, don't go too far up the neck. That's good. That's good. Now, just strum along with me to get the feel. Mimi, why did you change the station? Elvis Presley was on. Breakfast, dinner and tea. It's Elvis, Elvis, Elvis. Can't we listen to anything else? But he's the greatest, Mimi. He's the king. Listen to Mozart, John. That's real music. I don't understand, Bridget. How can anybody not like Elvis? Titration, gentlemen. Titration is a technique for determining the volumes of two reacting solutions. The volume of one solution, an alkali for example, is measured with a pipette into a conical flask. The other solution is poured through a... Mr. Quinn, what's so funny? Nothing, sir. This is your sick mind at work, isn't it, Levin? <laughs> isn't it? Just having a little doodle. Get out of this class! <laughs> Do not come back, ever! <laughs> Do you hear? Out! What the idiot. What did the headmaster say? That I'm suspended until he says I can come back. Know what the problem is, John? Nobody's got a sense of humour anymore. Exactly. What am I going to tell Mimi? Don't tell her anything. Just leave the school every day and come here. What if she finds out? Then she'll kill us both. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? I'm ready. Tender 
data. Don't talk bad. Okay. Get him there. The overwhelming consensus, Mrs. Smith, is that John should not return to Quarry Bank. Oh, please, sir. You have to understand. Ever since my husband died, there's been no man in the house to rein him in. Where's his natural father? Oh, God knows. He abandoned the child before he was born. Nobody's seen him in a dozen years. And his mother? My younger sister, Julia. She has another family. And um, since he was three, I've raised John as my own. Tried to do my best. Down deep, he's a good boy. And very talented. What if I could arrange for him to attend the Liverpool College of Art? The Art College? Yes, it's a... It's a more untraditional setting, less structured. Very open to new ideas. It just might be the right fit. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry, our staff meeting's about to start. Do you really think the art school will take him? Yes, yes, I do. The headmaster there's a friend of mine and, uh... Well, I took the liberty of showing him some of John's drawings. <sighs> This is such good news. Such a relief. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. Put your glad rags on. Join me, hunt. We'll have some fun when the clock strikes one. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. We're gonna rock, rock, rock till we're on I thought you'd like to wear... What in God's name do you think you're doing? Getting money for the fair. Oh, just like that. It's just the style, Mimi. Oh, it's disgraceful. You just want to embarrass me in front of the whole parish. That's it, isn't it? You know what them gates remind me of? Gates? No. Graceland. Where's that? Memphis, Tennessee, partner. That's where Elvis Presley built this great big mansion. Suppose he can afford it. You know what I'm gonna do when I'm as rich and famous as Elvis? No. Gonna build me a big mansion. Right here. Call it Strawberry Fields. You what? Sounds grander than just Strawberry Field. What about all the orphans? I'll kick them out. That's what you do when you're rich and famous. You screw the little people. <laughs> oh, I thought he'd be off today. What? I didn't bring me glasses. Eleanor Rigby, beloved wife of Thomas Woods. Asleep. Sleep. Yep. What the hell does that mean? It means that we better get out of here before she wakes up. <laughs> Songs. Here's a list. If you don't know how it goes, just fake it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, don't you look lovely? Oh, you just say it that. Have you seen John? No, not yet. Well, I think I better warn you. 
He's dressed up like a teddy boy. Oh, you think he was on the dingle the way he looks? Meanie. Can't you stop worrying about him for one afternoon? Afternoon, Walton. I'm John Lennon and we are the quarry men. Oh, Jory! Woo! A one, two, three, four! In God's name is that? It's John. John? John and his band? Come on. I saw my wife, it came like it. It was in my life. I'm gonna ride on railroad bill. I'm gonna ride on railroad bill. Railroad bill. Look at him. Isn't he great? Never worked and he never will. Why didn't he tell me he was in a band and that he was playing here today? Oh, he's been practicing so hard. We thought it'd be a nice surprise. Me, please. I can't believe I wasn't told. That'll be six pence, please. Thanks a lot. McCartney! This is Bee Bapalula. One, two, three. Well, Bee Bapalula, she's my baby. Bee Bapalula, I told me to name it. Bee Bapalula, she's my baby. Bee Bapalula, I told me to name it. Bee Bapalula, she's my baby. She's a woman who drives my car. Viva Lula, she's my baby. Viva Lula, call me baby. Viva Lula, she's my baby. Her, my baby, her, my baby. Pete. John. Great show, lads. Really great. Tonight will be even better. Yeah, you two know each other, yeah? Hi, Paul. Hi, Pete. John. I want to introduce you to a friend of mine. This is Paul. Paul McCartney. Hi. Paul plays guitar too. He's really good. Great set. Like the way you played with the words. I don't know. I make them up. Notice you only used uh, the four strings. It's the latest style in America, mate. He's only pulling your leg. His mum's been teaching him on a banjo. Aye, that explains it. Can I see it? to make it sound a bit better. That is better. How long have you been playing? About a year. Well, I got a girl with a record machine When it comes to love, and she's a queen Went to a dance on a Saturday night All alone, I can hold her tight she lives at 20 and 4 uptown, but the elevator's broken down. Well, it's one flight, two flight, three flight, four, five, six, seven flight, eight flight more. I get to the 12th and I'm starting to drag, 15 more and I'm ready to sag. I get to the top and I'm too tired to rock. What you think of that McCartney bloke? McCartney. McCartney, McFartney. <laughs> Do you think we should ask him to join the bands? We knew all the chords and all the words. And he can tune a guitar as well, so we'll save you some money. Yeah, but he's a little full of himself. If I let him in, he could be trouble. Don't forget about it. On the other hand, you're right. He's bloody good, and we need some real musicians. So what are you saying, John? What I'm saying is next time you see him, ask him if he wants to join the band. You sure, not? Yeah. I'm sure. Okay.
That's marvellous, Stuart. Have you ever thought of sculpting? Not really. Oh, you should. Your sense of form is so well developed. Stuart, come see me tomorrow before life class. There's a competition coming up I want to discuss. Very clever, Mr. Lennon. Very clever. <coughs> ah, bloody hate it here. Worse than the quality bank with all these hip cats. Make them believe they're bloody beatniks. It's not that bad, John. Not for you. You're an artist. You've got talent, not like all these phonies. You've got talent too, John. I'm just a bloody doodler. Well, then maybe you should go to music school. I mean, that's what you really dig. Yeah. The University of Boogie Woogie in Memphis, Tennessee. Why is there such a place? In my head. Well, then go there. First you imagine, then you create. That's what art is all about. That's very profound, Stuart. You know I can't be found. Hey, Cynthia. Hi, Stuart. I'm all alone. You can't go Stu, who's that bird? Oh, Cynthia Powell. Cynthia, right? She's in my lettering class. Yeah, she's dead proper, John. She's the kind of girl your Aunt Mimi would love. So much for her. John. Are we practicing tomorrow? Five o'clock at my mum's. Hi, I'm Paul. All right, Stu, Sutcliffe. All oh, right, John says you're going to be the Van Gogh of Liverpool. Only if he loses one of his ears. <laughs> This is me mate, George. George Harrison. Hi. We're heading to the pub. We'd invite you along, but they'll never let this little scally in. What did he mean by that? I'll oh, pay him no mind. That's just the way John is. I used to love coming here as a little girl. Watching the ships, thinking about all the exciting places where they'd come and go. Is that the kind of ship that my dad used to work on? Sometimes. You know, I had a dream about him the other night. But I don't know if it was him or just my imagination. Why is it nobody ever wants to talk about him? Your father was a handsome, charming rascal. Where did you meet him? In Sefton Park. I was only 16. He could dance and sing. He had a grand Irish tenor. Did you know? His father, your grandfather Jack, performed in minstrel shows in America. Let's see, there's musical talent in your blood, Jim. All I ever remember is Blackpool. Blackpool? My God. How can any of us ever forget Blackpool? A year after the war, your father just showed up one day and told Mimi he was taking you off on holiday. Mimi was upset, but he was your father. A week later, he rang her up to say you were both getting on so well. He was thinking of emigrating to New Zealand and taking you with him. I couldn't bear the thought of never seeing you again, so I rushed up to Blackpool. Here's your mum, mate. This is quite a surprise. Hello, John. Hello, Mummy. You're looking good, Julia. I heard about your plans, Freddy. It's not right. And a boy living with his auntie when he has a father. That's not right either. 
John, honey. Has your father told you about moving to New Zealand? Yes. And do you really want to go? Yes. You know that means you may never see me or Aunt Mimi or Uncle George again. Stop scaring the lad, will you, Julia? He's told you how he feels. Well, tell me again, John. Tell me you understand what all this means. I want to stay with Daddy. Okay then, John. I'll respect your decision. And I'm gonna have to go now. But before I do, will you give me one last hug? <laughs> <laughs> You've done now. Come on, let's go and pack, John. No, Daddy, I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> What I never understood was why after all of that you got rid of me again. I didn't get rid of you, John. I was young and confused and starting a new family with another man and I thought you'd have a better life with Mimi and Uncle George. I couldn't provide for you the way they could. But I always loved you, John. I always cared. You know that, don't you? I wish I knew. Your father. Do you think I'll ever see him again? No, John. I don't think you will. Tim Panali, here we come. John? There's a creature here to see you. Must be George. <laughs> <laughs> players, John? Just because they're old schoolmates. If you can get little Richard into the band, then they're out. I'll give him a call when we get home. In the meantime, we need a lead guitarist. Then go find me one. They don't grow on bloody trees, you know. I did find you one. Who? George. Him? He's bloody good. Go on, George. Show him what you can do. G was good. Yeah, but my aunt can't stand the sight of him. 
Welcome to the band, Mr. Harrison. Anybody who can get up Mimi Smith's nose as quick as you is all right with me. The one at the John Moore exhibition. For 65 pounds? Can you believe it? 65 quid? What? <laughs> Somebody win the pools. You just sold the painting for 65 quid. <laughs> You're having me up. What are you going to do with all the money? I don't know. Have a party. <laughs> I've got a better idea. Buy a bass and join the band. What? You need a bass player. But I, I don't know how to play the guitar. I'll teach you. Oh, hang on a minute, John. What we really need is a drummer. I don't want to have to play the drums anymore. There's no way that I'm going to play the drums. Then it's settled. You're our new bass player. Come on, let's get a drink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that Peter Sellers is so funny. He's John's favourite. Well, John's so funny. Maybe you should be a comedian. Oh, no, don't go giving him any new ideas. Him and that guitar is bad enough. <laughs> I'd better be off. Do you want to stay for another cup of tea? But then I'll never sleep. It's okay. Ta-ra.
Now, when the Duchess arrives home, she finds Jeeves, the butler, sitting in front of the fire, drinking a martini. Tossing aside her mink stole, she says, Jeeves, will you please take off my brassie? <laughs> he stands and obediently complies. Then she says, Jeeves, will you please take off my underwear? <laughs> and again he complies. Now, Jeeves, Duchess says, I shan't tell you this again. But the next time I catch you wearing my clothes, you are going to be sacked. <laughs> Oh, clean up your language now, Mace. The very proper Miss Cynthia Powell has entered the premises. Picked a good song. Thanks. May I have to dance, my lady? No. No? I'm sorry. I think you should know I'm engaged. Engaged? <laughs> I didn't bloody ask you to marry me. I just want to dance. Come on. Do you know, I look at you sometimes in that in class. Really? Do you know what I think? He changed his old fashioned style. I like the dubs your hair. You could be as pretty as Bridgie Bardell. A compliment or an insult? A bloody compliment. Bridgie Bardell is the most sexiest, most incredible woman in the world. I sometimes look at you in class too. Really? Yes. What's your name again? Johnny and the Moon Dogs. Here, son. Cheers, mate. Thanks for coming along. What? What's it mean, like? No way. No bloody way I'm going to do that. What's going on? Like I was telling your friend, I liked you boys. You were the best of the day. That's good. But I can't have that bass player of yours. Stuart? He's bloody awful. That's because he's learning with a little bit more experience. Oi, look, I'm not hiring a bloody amateur. I'll get you a new bass player. Forget it. Oh, hold on, hold on a minute, John. We both know Stuart's not that good. I don't care. This is my band and Stu's my friend, and I'm not sending them down. Either he's in, or we're both bloody out. All right. Okay. Hold up. Maybe there's a way around this. That'd be great. I'm booking a tour of Scotland. Lesser bands, smaller venues, if you want it. Can we keep Stuart? No. All right, but I ain't gonna pay him. Comes out of your pocket. How much are you going to pay us? 18 quid a week. <laughs> Each? Each, my arse. 18 for the lot of you. Now, that's it. Take it or leave it. We'll, we'll take, take it. it. Oi, another thing. Forget Johnny and the Moondogs. Sounds like a bloody skiffle group. Find yourself a new name, something catchier. All right? 
Right, who's next? Nothing's gonna stop us now, lads. We're going straight to the top. The top of most to the pop of most. <laughs> but first, we need a new name. How about Paul and the Moon Dogs? Oh, Mooney and the John Dogs. Do you know what be a great name for an English band? The Crickets. I think that's already been taken, John. How about the Beatles? The Beatles? Yeah. Well, they were a motorcycle gang in the wild one. Not Brando's, the other blokes. The Beatles? I like it. Well, we spell it different. With an A, you know, so we're like a beat group. B-E-A-T. L-E-S? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Paul? It's all right by me, George? Sure. By the powers vested in me, I hereby christen thee the Beatles. The, the Beatles. Beatles. You, pretty boy. All right, that's enough, you lads. Look, I don't want any you trouble. Care what you want, pretty boy. Just sod off, yeah. Whatever you say. Puff. Come on, Bill. Him. Get him out. Come here. They could have killed you. Get him to No, no, no hospital. I'm okay. Get him on the Come on, Sue. Put your hand on me, Sue. So that's it. You're just up and leaving. No matter what I say, no matter what I think. I know what you're going to say. And I know what you think. Germany. Of all the places to it's go. It's a great opportunity. If you like English groups in Hamburg, Lots of bands from Liverpool are going there. Well, what about school? Don't you have exams coming up? Oh, I'm through with school. It's a lot of bloody rubbish. Well, oh, that's wonderful, John. That's just wonderful. Look, I don't need a piece of paper to tell me that I'm up to somebody else's bloody standards. John, you're almost 20 years old, and I know you don't want me telling you what to do anymore. That's right. But if you're not going back to school, please go and get yourself a job. A real job that can lead somewhere. Don't you see that I have a real job? Playing in a band that's gonna pay me a hundred quid a week. A hundred quid? That's right. A hundred quid to do what I really like. That's more than I make in a month. Driving a city bus back and forth to Penny Lane. I'm sick of worrying about you, John. I regret the day I left that guitar into this house. Mark my words, John Lennon. That guitar would be your downfall yet. We'll see about that. feel like I've never left. Hamburg's as wet and dreary as Liverpool, but twice as many ships and drunken sailors. The Jerry's may have lost the war, but they sure know how to party. Pubs are always open eight days a week, and anything, I mean anything, goes. 
The Nazi who runs the club we're playing was supposed to set us up in a nice hotel. Instead, we're living on top of a cinnamon digs like the bloody black hole of Calcutta. Fortunately, we're playing so hard we don't need much sleep. Pete Best, our new drummer, seems to be working out. He's a good bloke, but quiet's in a bit of a loner. Because we don't speak any crowd, we mainly hang around with other groups from Liverpool. And you remember Rich Starkey. He's here with Rory Storm and the Hurricanes. Richie's a great guy to have a pint with. He just changed his name. Now he's calling himself Ringo Starr. It takes At first the crowds were small, but now words gotten around. And we're attracting a lot of high school and college kids. They dig us because we play loud rock and roll and like to have fun. A lot of our fans are what I call exes, you know. Existentialists. They read satire and poetry, real arty types, not like the fakes we knew at art college. The exes are into all sorts of new things, especially fashion. Some of the blokes like our friend Klaus even clone their hair forward like Julius Caesar. And you wouldn't believe some of the girls, sin. They make the birds back home look like bloody nuns. Klaus's friend Astrid is really fantastic. But don't worry, Sim. You have nothing to be jealous about. Astrid and Stu are already a couple. They're perfect for each other. I've never seen Stu happier. I'm counting the days till you come over, Sim. I'm so randy. I'm living like a bloody monk just waiting to see you again. Are you here? Are you boy? Getting on step? Oh, John, piss off! Finish later! Piss off! Come on, you're shouting, Mac! Slut! Come on, you! Why are you English like that? Oh, about me taking some publicity photos. Tomorrow? Yes. But Pete's got all the plans, but I'm game. Me too. Good. But first we must change your look. Voila. So? What do you think? I think it's smashing, darling. Absolutely. Positively smashing. I kind of like it. So do I. Then you're like Sonny. <laughs> Astrid's got a great eye. Nice ass, too. <laughs> Thanks, love. No sleep tonight, lads. Gentlemen, good evening. My name is Peter Eckhorn, and I operate the Top Ten Club. Where Tony Sheridan's playing. Yes, that's right. And where you boys should be. You are too good for this dog. Come play for me, eh? Are you dog? I need to be stars. Well, that's a very tempting offer, uh, heck on. We've got a contract here. <laughs> a contract, huh? <laughs> now, it is my great honor to welcome to the top ten one of the most exciting bands in all of Europe. It's in fact, these boys just back from his heard on his new single, My Bunny. Ladies and gentlemen, from Liverpool, England, Zipio! Recognize her to 
George is only 17. So bloody what? You must be 18 to play in a club. Don't worry, George. I'll pass it, Carl Winston Churchill. He'll straighten us out. That was the port of George. And Bruno gets Paul and Pete arrested. They're out of jail now and they're on the way back home. Bitte legen Sie auf. Ihre Zeit ist ausgelaufen. Okay, time's up. I'll call you when we get back. Okay. Bye. Love you. Do you believe this crap? First taste of success, first record. Now we've got to go back to bloody Liverpool. Imagine what my aunt's going to say. I told you, John, you'll never make a living playing a guitar. Bad hangover. No, oh, it's, it's his bloody headaches. We'll get it checked out when we get back. I'm not going home, John. I'm staying. What? Me and Astrid, we're getting married. Married? Yeah. I love her. We're like... We're like soulmates. What are you gonna do here? Study art again. Well, there's this famous professor in Hamburg. Well, he's seen my work. He's dead encouraging. What about that band? <sighs> You're better off without me. But me and Paul, we're gonna end up killing each other one night. We all know he's the one who should be playing bass. Oh, so that's it? Just like that. Everything's over. It's not over. It's just going to be different, that's all. But this is really hard for me too, John. You're like a brother to me. I'm leaving. Paul's right. You are bloody awful. <sighs> so now the truth comes out. Good luck. I'm going to miss you, mate. Yeah. I'll feed the same. And the group is called the Beat Brothers. If they're from Liverpool, I would think I would have heard of them. Linda? Yes, Mr. Epstein? Do you know a local group called the Beat Brothers? Must mean the Beatles. The Beatles? What kind of a name is that? They're the hottest group around. You should really go and see them, Mr. Epstein. They play every lunch out at the cabin. Where's that? Just around the corner on Matthew Street.
Hey, Paul, you want some of me No, thanks, but if you got some gun. Got some ABC. ABC? What kind is that? Already been chilled. I've just been told we have a very, very important visitor with us today, Mr. Brian Epstein from the NEMS Record Store. How about giving him a big Cavern Club welcome? Oh, be shy, Mr. Epstein. Give us away. There he is, there. Very smartly dressed as well, am I, Jack? Especially him. What was his name? Oh, that's John Lennon. He's the cheeky one. He's marvelous. No, I won't. What? I said he's marvelous. Oh, yeah. They all are. Be afraid. Just as long as he stands. Stand by me. And darling, darling, stand. I'll tell you why you need a manager. You boys, in my opinion, are enormously talented. But you are underpaid and underexposed. Get us more money and we'll be happy to expose ourselves. <laughs> you need to be marketed properly or you'll never get out of Liverpool. The goal must be to go national. And the key to that would be securing a recording contract. With all due respect, Mr. Epstein, Mr. No. Epstein, you've never managed a rock and roll group before. Why should we trust you? Because I'm a successful businessman, Paul. I own record stores and I have contacts in the music business everywhere, including London. But more importantly, I believe in you, to all of you. From the moment I set foot in the cavern, I sent something special, truly unique. And I'm convinced if we can work as a team, we can achieve something that'll make the rest of England stand up and take notice. Okay, Mr. Epstein. Brian. Okay, Brian. Where do we sign? Dear Stu, so much is going on here. I don't know where to start. Brian, our new manager, is great. We're getting bigger and better gigs, and we're actually starting to make money. We went to London New Year's Day for our big audition at Decca. We thought it went well, but... Thank you, gentlemen. We appreciate you coming down. Don't tell me you didn't like them. I'm afraid I didn't. How is that possible? You see, Mr. Epstein... It's Epstein. Yes. As I was about to say, it is my job, Mr. Epstein, to feel the pulse of the record-buying public. And it's my sense that guitar bands, like these chaps, are simply on the way out. You are... Absolutely wrong. These boys are going to be bigger than Elvis. Come to Liverpool. See them perform. See how the audience is responding. Liverpool is not London, Mr. Epstein. I know you have a very profitable situation up there. If I were you, sir, I would just tend to that. Well, I am not you, sir. And someday you are going to kick yourself for this decision. I hope the bastard kicks himself to death someday. Don't despair for the lonely people, Mr. Sucker. We have just been named the number one group in all of Liverpool. That's fantastic. Yeah, we saved the best till last. They're coming back. When? Next week, to play the Star Club. God, how is that for a big step up? Unbelievable. Oh, it would be so great to see him. Please say something. Okay. I'm okay. You must 
see a doctor. Yeah, you're my doctor. It's great to see you. Where's Stuart? What's the matter? What's going on? Stuart died last night, John. In the ambulance on the way to the hospital. <laughs> it's a joke, right? Come on, where is he? It's no joke, John. It was a brain hemorrhage. What am I going to do, John? How can I go on without him? Because you bloody have to go on. It's like when my mum was killed. You have to make up your mind. Do you want to live? Or do you want to die too? We can't bring Stu back. It's a sod and all. That's God's comfort. has a stellar reputation. Sodder's reputation? What did he bloody say? That he doesn't know much about rock groups. He mainly produces classical music and comedy albums. But he thought you boys were special. Well, of course we are. There is a problem. He doesn't like your hair. Well, I didn't like his tie. It's Pete. He thinks he's the weak link in the band. If he signs us, he will insist on using another drummer for the recording sessions. Pete won't stand for that. I say we make a clean cut. It's not like we haven't talked about this before. George is right. We'd all rather have Rich Starkey. Now's our chance. Pete's going to be crushed. Absolutely bloody crushed. He doesn't care if we keep him for live performances. That makes no sense. If we're going to do this, we can't do it ass about face. You tell Pete he's out. I'll get Ringo in. You know what's great? This George Martin produces all the Goon Show records. All my favourite comedians. You see, right there we have something in common. How did Pete take the news? Not good. Thank God Brian had to tell him. But Ringo was excited. I told him his beard had to go, but he could keep his sideboards. Hello. Hello. This is the operator, call him a Sophia Powell. Is she in? I was at the doctor's today, John. I'm pregnant. What am I going to tell my mother? What's am I going to tell Mimi? What am I going to do, John? There's only one thing we can do. I have to get married. <laughs> be all right, Sin. Really. It's not the end of the world. You're just like your mother, John. Never a thought about consequences. Just go off and do whatever you want. Brian's arranged everything. 
We're getting married tomorrow at the registry office. You're too young. You're too irresponsible to get married. Well, don't expect me or anyone in this family to attend. You've shamed us. And we don't want anything to do with you. Just get out! Just get out of my sight! How did it go? Better than expected. Really? Yeah. I'm still alive. It's absolutely imperative we keep the marriage and birth a secret. Now that you boys have a recording contract, you're like a rocket ship just waiting to blast off. Nothing can distract us or get in the way. What's he want me to do? Send sin to a bloody convent? John, you must trust me on this. The Beatles fan club is growing by hundreds a day. And your most dedicated fans are teenage girls. You lads are a fantasy to those little birds. We can't ruin that by announcing you're married. It won't do. The beetle must be single and available. almost an hour. Sorry, had to take a bath. Well, at least he's clean. Clean machine. This is a pattern, Paul, and I want it to end. That goes for all of you. The time has come to start acting like professionals. Your first single is about to be released, and I'm working on bookings all over the country. You can't keep on behaving like wild men from the provinces. Why not? Because if we are to reach a large national audience, you need to be taken seriously. No more playing whatever strikes your fancy. No more smoking and eating and hitting each other on stage. Can we breathe? And no more leather jackets and cowboy boots. We need to create a new, more modern image. This is what I'm talking about. It's all the rage in Paris. You want to turn us into bloody pansies? No, John, I want you to be different. Looking like a bunch of Lime Street scruffs will never take in London. You boys are the future of rock and roll, not the past. This isn't who we are. George is right. We're rockers. This is a total bloody sellout. What are the fans going to say? It's your new fans that count. But you want to spend the rest of your life playing in that cellar full of noise on Matthew Street? I think Brian's right. The leather's are old hat. This is show business. We need something fresh. This isn't about the music, John. This is about marketing, promotion. No, Brian. It's about money. But if you really think this is what it takes, I'll wear a bloody gorilla suit on stage. 
But then you better make us a lot of money. And I mean a lot. Really, it's all about the music. That's why we're getting such a big following. Sorry, but uh, we have to go. Oh, thank you so much. You come on backstage tonight, right? Definitely. Great. I'll see you later. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Reminds me of that pretty bird from the Ronettes. Can't believe you did that. Oh, you're just jealous, Eppy. She's a journalist, John. What if she decides to write a first person about the night I slept with a beetle? Then I better give her something to write about. Mr. Epstein? Epstein's Fish and Chips. How can I help you? Cynthia just went into labour, John. If you hurry, you still might get here in time. I can't do that, Mimi. I can't just up and leave the group. John, your wife is having a baby. We've sold out shows every night this week. We've got contracts and obligations. You also have responsibilities. Are you going to miss the birth of your first child, just like your father did? Just... just tell Sen that my heart is with her. And that I'll be there soon. Please, just tell her that. You have my number at the hotel. And Brian's office can always track me down. No, John, you phone us. Okay, I'll call you in an hour. Nobody has known my true identity. God, it's good to see you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, who does he look like? I think his father. Did you name him yet? I thought Julian. Julian? After your mother. Oh. Right. Well, let's get a look at the little book. Sin, isn't he? <laughs> you going to be a famous rocker like your dad, huh? Oh. I think your moustache is scaring him here. Give him over. Oh, God. Looks like your disguise didn't work. It's all reception that was your brother. Just because you make a hit record, I think they bloody own you. Newspaper, Mayor. Well, your tour's almost over, isn't it? Tonight and tomorrow in Leeds. 
Then we're off for a couple of weeks. It's going to be so great to finally have you around. Oh, I meant to tell you. Brian asked me to go with him to Spain. When? As soon as the tour ends. John! We just had a baby. And I'm just coming off two months of one-night stands. I'm bloody exhausted, Sim. But why go off with Brian? Because he's the boss and he asked me to. Look, a year from now, the Beatles might be over. But a guy like Brian will still be around, making money, cutting deals. It can't hurt to be his friend. Okay. Look, there'll be plenty of time for you and the baby when I get back. I promise. Bye, Julian. got the number one record in England, and I still can't get the bloody records here in America. Brian thinks we should just go there and tour, but I said bollocks to that. Every British band that's gone there without a following has come home like a whipped pup. I told Brian that I won't set foot in America until we're number one there too. It's the only bloody way that I'm going to the land of Elvis. Right now, it's being reported as a drunken brawl. But that could change. Reporters have been calling all morning, wanting more information. Adam bloody call. Sit up, John. Pay attention to what I'm saying. This is serious business, very serious. You boys are on the verge of becoming the biggest group in Britain. Maybe even the world. Do you want to throw all that away? What are you talking about? The man is in hospital because you couldn't control your drunken temper. Right now, my solicitor is trying to negotiate a financial settlement. Hopefully, that can be arranged. And the second it is, you are going to issue a public apology. No, I probably won't. Yes, you will. And we're going to plant it with a friendly journalist, and that will end it once and for all. Otherwise, we have a potential scandal here that could ruin us all. Do you know what that wanker said to me? How was your honeymoon in Spain with your new beard, Brian? He was calling me a bloody queer! People have called me that my entire life. That's no reason to try to kill someone. Yeah, but you are a bloody queer. That's right, John. And need I remind you that homosexuality is a crime? Do you want to open up that whole can of worms? Because if you don't apologize, that's exactly what you'll do. Did you hear? The Beatles manager is a puff. Yes, no, that him and that John Lennon went up to Spain together. Let him bloody talk. No, John. If we don't stop these whispers right now, this band could be finished. Is that what you want? If so, you go tell Paul and George and Ringo that you want to throw everything away just to satisfy your stupid, stubborn pride. Issue your bloody apology. That's what I care. Up, John. It's front page in every paper back home. It's bound to happen, Brian. It's no big bloody deal. That remains to be seen. Look on the bright side, Brian. Now nobody can accuse me of being a queer. Very funny, John. 
very funny. <laughs> I think the garçon has a telephone call for you. Right. Brian seems to have his knickers in a twist. Yeah, Wade's out that John's married. Are you really married to John? That's what it says in the papers. I thought Brian had read a bad review or something. Upcoming as well. Yeah. Last time he played an audience that bad was her first week in Hamburg. Bloody frogs. What were they expecting? Molly's Chevalier. <laughs> you know what the problem was? Yeah, they were all deaf. No. They were all fellas. Deaf fellas? I suppose the Mademoiselles will have a curfew. At least the food's good. That was Ed Sullivan on the phone. I want to hold your hand just in number one in America. Ed Sullivan. Ed Sullivan, the man who launched Elvis. He wants you to come to New York to headline his show. <laughs> Nothing can be more important than this, lads. Nothing. Where are your lads? To the top, Johnny, to the top. And where's the top? To the top of most, to the top of most. What's this? Read it. Remember, John, you'll never make a living playing a guitar. I suppose I do deserve that. It's just a little joke, Mimi. I thought you'd find it funny. Oh, I know you think I was a monster at times, John. Whatever I did, I did, out of love. You were my whole life, my whole universe. Come on, Mimi. Oh, the moment I set eyes on you in the hospital, I knew there was something special about you. I just wanted you to live up to your potential. Well, I hope you know I tried to do my... Don't go soft to me now, Mimi. I'm sorry. Well, I'm off to America, uh, to land of Elvis and Cadillac cars. Well, give my regards to Broadway. And I'll remember you to Leicester Square. Oh. Oh. You take care of yourself. You too. <laughs>